we are given an object. How do we know if this is acidic or basic? Will you say that this is acid just because your teacher told you so? That's not fair. So this is exactly when we talk about acid base indicators. There are certain substances which react very differently with an acid and very differently with a base. Thus enabling us to know which one is an acid and which one is a base. The most popular and most common acid base indicator is the litmus solution. You must have seen the litmus papers, the blue litmus paper and the red litmus paper. So the easiest thing to test, the easiest way to test an acid or a base. Uh, so what happens in an acidic solution? The blue litmus paper turns red. So if you can see here, this was a blue paper and it turned red in contact with an acidic solution. Similarly, just the opposite happens with a basic solution that is a red litmus turns blue in a basic solution and the color doesn't change in a neutral solution. And this is how we can test whether a particular solution is acidic, basic or neutral in nature. So these are just indicators. They just tell you whether this substance is acidic or basic. That's it. Uh, another popular acid base indicator is red cabbage leaves. So have you ever seen red cabbage? Normally the cabbage is green in color. But if you go to some supermarket or some market, you would see this red colored cabbage. So their leaves, they also act as indicators. So their leaves turn red in acidic solution, green in basic solution and blue if the solution is neutral. So these are certain things that you need to know, like, you know, what would be the color if the particular substance is acid, base or, you know, neutral. So this, these colors are something that you should know. Another indicator is turmeric, which is very easily available in our kitchen because especially in India, we use turmeric in cooking almost like I would say more than 50% of the dishes we use turmeric, which is also called haldi. Now, the in acidic solution, the turmeric, so if, if you pre prepare a strip of turmeric, like, you know, that, that's a turmeric strip, uh, so it it is yellow if the solution is acidic in nature and it turns red if it is basic in nature. So you would see that often if you mix something which has base because a lot of substances that we use for cooking has base, right? So if you mix those substances with turmeric, you would see, a, you would notice a change in color. Another one is colored petal of some flowers such as hydrangea and geranium. So these are some flowers which are not, I would not say that they are very commonly available everywhere, but yeah, their petals uh, act as acid base indicators. Not just that, we have some chemicals like phenolphthalein, uh, which acts as a very good acid base indicator. So with, so this is how the structure of phenolphthalein looks like. And with this in acidic solution, it is colorless. And in basic solution, it turns pink. And that's how we identify between acid and base. Not just phenolphthalein, we also have methyl orange, which behaves differently with an acid and a base. So in acidic solution, it turns pink. And in basic solution, it turns yellow. So that is why I've put these pictures here so that it becomes easy for you to uh, kind of uh, get a perception of how the color change happens. So that's methyl orange. So till now we have spoken about so many acid base indicators where a color change tells you whether the substance is acidic or basic in nature. So let's look at this experiment with onion which very clearly shows that how onion acts as an olfactory indicator. So what we do is, in fact, if you want, you can also try out this experiment at your home and uh, all you need is some finely chopped onion along with a cloth strip and place it inside a bag like this and then tie the bag really tight so tie it tightly and leave it like that overnight right now what do you do you take two strips strip one and strip two like these so on strip one you pour hydrochloric acid now before i go ahead so from where did we get these strips this strip is like obtained from this particular piece of cloth. For example, you leave it tonight. So tomorrow morning, you take that strip of cloth, tear it into two pieces. 
So this is your piece one, this is your piece two. So on piece one, you pour some hydrochloric acid. On piece two, you pour some sodium hydroxide, which is base. Right? Now what do you do? Rinse both of these cloth, I mean cloth pieces with water. And then what do you observe? You observe that even after rinsing with water, you see that strip one still smells. Strip two, no smell. How did that difference happen? So this shows that onion, when it reacts with acid, the smell exists. But when it reacts with base, the smell goes off. So and that is why onion is called as an olfactory indicator because here we see that there is no change in color but there is a change in smell. So there is a change in smell when it is a base but there is no change in smell when there is when it is an acid. Right. So, so these kind of substances whose order changes in acidic or basic media, they are called olfactory indicator and onion is one example of olfactory indicator. Another example is vanilla essence. We often use vanilla essence when we bake a cake. So it gives a very nice fragrance. Right. Let's perform an experiment with vanilla essence. So what you need to do is you take two test tubes, test tube one and test tube two. So in the first test tube, you put some hydrochloric acid. So in this, we have put some hydrochloric acid. And in this one, we have sodium hydroxide. And in both of these test tubes, we have dilute vanilla essence. That means vanilla essence uh, diluted with water, mixed with water. Now, once we put pour hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide in these two, we really shake them well. Now, after shaking them well, so in both of these, we anyways have dilute vanilla essence. So that's there in both of these. Now, we shake them really well. So shake well, that's important. And after that, we see that in test tube one, it still smells the smell of vanilla essence is still there. But in case of test tube 2, there is no smell. So that shows that the order of vanilla essence goes away when it reacts with a base. But it stays when it reacts with an acid. So you see, most of these olfactory indicators, they have a very... Uh, you know, very strong smell of their own. For example, the smell of vanilla essence can be very clearly felt. Similarly, the smell of onion is really strong and you can really feel the that uh, smell, right? So the, generally, these kind of substances which have a very strong and typical smell, they act as olfactory indicators. So it's time for a question. So now that we know about uh, acid, bases, and we also know about these indicators, let's try this out. You have been provided with three test tubes. One of them contains distilled water. The other two contain an acidic solution and a basic solution respectively. If you are given only red litmus paper, how will you identify the contents of each test tube? Okay, so let us first mark these test tubes as one, two, three. So out of these three, one of them has distilled water, one has acid, one has base. So we have to identify which one is what. Since we have a red litmus paper, all that we can do to start with is dip red litmus paper in all the three test tubes one by one. So wherever it turns blue, so that is base because in if a, a substance is basic, then the red litmus turns blue. So one thing is clear. So let us suppose, let, let's just assume that in test tube 1, the red litmus paper turns blue. So that means in the test tube 1, we have a base. So 1 is sorted. Now what are you going to do? How will you identify that out of 2 and 3, which is acidic and which is distilled water? So distilled water is basically neutral. So how will you identify that? Because for that, you would need a blue litmus paper. Do you have a blue litmus paper? Yes, we do have because the red litmus paper which I had, it turned blue, right? So now I also have a blue litmus paper. So now we will dip this blue litmus paper. So we dip 
blue litmus paper in 2 and 3. So wherever we see there is no change in color that is distilled water. So if there is no change in color that is distilled water. So let us suppose that in 2 in test tube 2 there is no change in color that means that is distilled water and is neutral. And therefore the last one we will definitely see a change in color that it will turn the blue litmus to red. So that is going to be acidic. So in this fashion we can determine which is acid, which is base and which is neutral. So friends, what do you think about water? Is it an acid or a base? Well, water can be considered as an acid or a base depending upon how you look at it. It can behave like a base in certain reactions or an acid in certain other reactions. So let's take a look. An important note, distilled water is always neutral but the water that we get from the tap or the rain water, they all have ions in them which make them acidic or basic. So let us see how water behaves both like an acid and a base. So we would see that in some reactions water takes hydrogen ions so it behaves as a base while in some reactions it gives hydrogen ions and therefore behaves like an acid. So let us look at this particular reaction. So here we see that water reacts with water to form hydronium ions and OH minus ions. Right? So what's happening in this particular reaction? So here we see that this particular water H2O this forms H3O plus. So while it forms H3O plus, what's happening? It is taking in one H plus. So in this process, it is taking in one H1 H plus. So accepting H plus ions, that means it is acting as a base, right? But when you look at this particular water molecule, what's happening? This particular water molecule is giving out H plus ions right so, so and that's the H plus ion which this particular water molecule is accepting but this water molecule is releasing H plus ions therefore this is behaving like an acid so in this one reaction we see that one water molecule is behaving like a base because it is accepting the hydrogen ion which is released by the other water molecule so the other water molecule is behaving like an acid that is why it is said that it all depends on how you look at it. So water has the ability to behave like an acid. It also has the ability to behave like a base. It has certain properties similar to acid, certain similar to base. And that's why there are, there are so many questions which arise in our mind with regards to water. Having said that, when it comes to distilled water, it is all pure it has no ions within it so distilled water is always neutral but when we talk about other water like the tap water or the rain water so they all have ions in it in fact the drinking water the water that we drink that they also have ions in it because those ions are useful for our body our body need minerals so they are all not neutral only distilled water is neutral now that we have been talking about acids and bases for quite some time let us see how do some of the popular acids and bases look like so here we take examples of some of the most popular acids like sulfuric acid hydrochloric acid nitric acid acetic acid and all of these how do they look like they look somewhat like this so they are in the liquid form. So I am sure that you would have seen all of these acids mostly in your science laboratories. Right? So they are like packed inside jars like this and they look like water. So liquid form. So that's how they look. On the other hand, we have some bases like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide and they exist in solid form. So they look somewhat like this, like, uh, like uh, you can say just like naphthalene balls. That's how they look like, right, right now. So they are like crystal form, uh, white in color. So th this is how they look like, they're solid. Again, when you talk about some other bases like calcium hydroxide or magnesium hydroxide or ammonium hydroxide, they are all in powder form like this, right? like white color, powdery form. Right? So these 
this is how uh, some of the popular assets and bases look like i hope you found this information on asset base indicators useful please share your feedback in the comment section we will be eagerly waiting for your feedback in the next video we are going to talk about the reactions of assets and bases so stay tuned